If you liked the video, please like and subscribe for the next video. The tutor presents figurative language. Figurative language is a word or phrase that's meaning is not supposed to be taken literally. Figurative language can also be used to make your writing better. Listen to these sentences. John walked down an empty street. He then saw a rose in a field. Then he dropped it. Now listen to this. John walked down an almost abandoned street. He then saw the most beautiful rose in a huge field. Then the fierce winds took it right out of his hands. Which sounds better? The second one, probably, right? They have roughly the same meaning or denotation, but have a different connotation or feel. The second version has more intensive connotation, which makes everything feel more exaggerated. So I made the world look bigger. How do we do this though? Figurative language. There are different types of figurative language. Similes, metaphors, onomatopoeia, personification, hyperbole, idioms, etc. There are a few more, but I'm not going to name all of them. These are some basic ones that you can use in your writing. Now let me explain every single one of these forms of figurative language. The first form is similes. Similes are when you compare two things with like or as. Here's an example. They were as fast as cheetahs during the race. The second form are metaphors. Metaphors are when you compare two things without like or as. Here's an example. She's a real night owl. The third form is onomatopoeia. Onomatopoeia is when you make a word from a sound. Here's an example. Bark! The fourth form is personification. Personification is when you give a non-human thing human traits. Here's an example. The wind swept me off my feet. The fifth form is hyperbole. Hyperbole is when you exaggerate something. Here's an example. He's gonna kill me when he finds me. The sixth and final form are idioms. Idioms are phrases with a figurative meaning that can't really be translated. Here's an example. If you watch my videos, tests would be a piece of cake. Okay, that one is true. Anyway, let me tell you about the non-translatable part of idioms. If I translate that sentence into Spanish, just an example language, it will be Si miras mis videos, los exámenes serán un pedazo de pastel. If you tell a Spanish speaker this, they'll have no idea what you're talking about. Instead of saying a piece of cake, you'd say pan comido, which means eating bread. They have relatively the same meaning, just different words. Cake and bread, pretty similar. I mean, they're both baked goods. Getting back on topic. As you can see, idioms and other types of figurative language can't really be translated, but you can find the relative version in that language that has the same meaning. It's time for a refresher. We have seen figurative language can be used to spice up your writing. It can be used to compare things in funnier ways. It can be used to represent sounds into words. It can be used to make animals humans. It can be used to exaggerate things in funny ways. And it can be used to talk about things in strange ways. And they are called similes, metaphors, onomatopoeia, personification, hyperbole, and idioms. That's it! Thank you for watching the tutor!
See you next time. And like always, stay smart.